So I'm going to go ahead and call BUHS number six meeting for Monday, April 23rd to order at 6.30. Um, and we are called to order. And the first thing on our agenda is to go into a personnel uh, uh, executive session, um, VSA Title 1313A1, um, uh, essentially related to a personnel matter. So we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to call executive session to order. We're going to go into the conference room for the executive session. Um, and then we will come out, out of executive session back out here. So we come out of executive session on camera. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I make a motion to go into executive session for personnel matter at 630. Okay. Second. Move to seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So board members. So I'm going to go ahead and Shiani, you all set? All right, I'm going to go ahead and dissolve executive session at 7:45. So we are we've just come out of executive session, and is there a motion? Uh, yes, I move that we accept the recommendation of the administration on a personnel matter. Second. Moved and seconded. All right, we can't have any discussion because it is a, it was an executive session matter, so we cannot have discussion on it, but, so all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? None? All right, so it passes 9-0. So we're done with that. All right, we're moving on to item three on our agenda, which is the clerk's report. Um, which includes approval of the minutes from March 19th and April 2nd. Um, so, is there a motion to accept those minutes? For, I'm not remembering seeing them. Yes. We haven't seen them, so we're gonna we're gonna wait till we see them. Something, but there wasn't really anything there. there right. There was a template. Yeah, but that's something for a later a later discussion later on in our meeting. So we're going to skip over that. Um, are there any communications that have come to board members? Um, yes, Bob. Just quickly, I received a communication. Oddly enough, it was from myself wearing another hat. Uh, but I just would like to uh, make everyone aware, including the TV audience, that uh, Governor's Institutes of Vermont uh, have a, a still open enrollment program for two or three of their institutes. Um, Governor's Institute, very briefly, is an intensive uh, program that uh, allows uh, young uh, freshmen through juniors to spend a week to 10 days at a college campus in the summer uh, exploring in depth a topic that it might be of great interest to them. And it's, a, uh, I believe, a very beneficial. I will disclose that I am on the Board of Governor's Institutes of Vermont. But, um, if you know of a young person, um, or if there's anybody here at the school, I know it's been publicized here at the school, uh, there are um, openings in the Arts Institute, uh, IT and uh, filmmaking, environmental science and technology, and, and entrepreneurship. There are 11 institutes altogether. The other seven are, are full, uh, but there are some openings available. And, uh, and can, Anybody that's interested or you know wants to present a name or suggest someone, suggest to someone that they consider it, uh, it's giv.org is the website. And there's information here at the school, I believe, as well. So thank you for that little opportunity. Thank you. Um, and it is a wonderful program, so hopefully some people will take advantage and make sure there's no empty spots. Um, I did have a communication also that I received from the New England Association of Schools and Colleges. Um, and it was actually to Mr. Perrin, and, re and he reported on this at our last meeting about the five-year progress report. But I also received a letter, as a copy of that letter. Um, and I, as I read through the letter, um, I think Steve did a, a good job of underselling what a good job that our school's doing and what how their perception of us and what the school's doing and the administration and the, and the faculty. So um, 
kudos to them, and it's a, it's a very nicely worded letter, but thank you. So there's that. Um, so there's we really nothing to... We all got communications dealing with the Black Lives Matter. Yes. So we all get yeah. Um, and there's, so there's nothing really to approve in the clerk's report, so we won't worry about doing that because there's no minutes to approve. We're just going to go ahead and move on. Um, the next thing on our agenda is recognition of groups and, and, and or individual visitors. Um, we have a lot of visitors here today, which is wonderful and something that is starting to happen a lot more this year, which in, one, in a lot of ways is really exciting, so thank you. Um, can, just, just to be clear why everyone's here, because as Russ just pointed out, many of us have received communications from a variety of people related to the Black Lives Matter flags. Is, is everyone here for that? Is there, is there somebody that's here that's here that's not to speak about that? Okay, just I just want to make sure that we're, there's not somebody else here for some other reason and we're, we're lumping them into with a group that's not for them, for the reason why they're here, so we don't miss anybody. And that's listed under our unfinished business, the Black Lives Matter flag um, for all of BUHS. Um, just to recap, at our last meeting, um, some members of the middle school students populate aware group came and requested for the flag to be hung on the middle school, uh, in front of the middle school uh, on the flagpole. And um, we've since had requests from other people in the community as well as the administration actually before we even left that room that night to do it campus wide. Um, so that's, that request has been made. Um, and I'm happy to give folks a chance to talk um, just because of a couple of things. Yes, Steve. Um, there is a BUHS, a group of BUHS students who would like to present first if possible. Okay, great. I will call on them in a moment. Should we have a motion to that at first? To let them speak? Well, no, a motion of the uh, item A. Of oh, for the unfinished business. Yes. We could do that. Sure. Why don't we do that? Are you making that motion? I would like. To. Okay. Good. I would like to make a motion that the BUHS District Six Number Board uh, Number Six Board um, agree with many individuals who have come to our meetings, and that we will fly the Black Lives Matter flag on all three camps. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All right, so let's begin the discussion portion of this. Um, folks in the audience, if you are speaking, um, BCTV has asked me to ask you to please stand up and identify yourself so that they can get you on camera for that, um, so that it's just not a voice in a crowd of people on TV, um, just so that it's clear and you're easily heard and understood. So um, please do that. Um, and why don't we have the BUHS students that want to present, that have a presentation for us, why don't you all kind of step forward and do that first, and then we can go from there. All right. Maybe you can start by just introducing yourselves. Oh, um, I'm Tony Andor Antonio Omari. I'm in grade 10. I'm James Shanti Strother. I'm in grade 12. I'm Shadira Strickland. I'm in grade 11. I'm Zee Muhammad. I'm in grade 10. You have the floor. All right. <laughs> so, we want to raise the Black Lives Matter flag because us students of color feel really underrepresented and Black Lives Matter isn't saying that all other lives don't matter. It's saying that they matter just as much as any other lives. And we feel that raising this flag will make a really welcoming atmosphere and community for the school for us students of color who face a lot of struggles daily in school related to encounters with racism. So. Um, I am one of the newest students at um, BUHS, and I 
when I first came in, I immediately felt targeted because of my skin color. And um, um, I felt like I felt like I wasn't wanted in the school. And um, you know, I've been here for almost six months now, and I I've gone through racial harassment. I've gone through um, threats because of my skin color. I've had people threatening to kill me because of my skin color. And it's school for me every day is a very hostile environment. And I I do really well in school, but. It's hard to show up to classes where you are constantly told that you're not wanted and that you don't belong here. And so I believe that the Black Lives Matter flag would represent that us students of color do belong here just as much as any other student in this school. And I believe that the Black Lives Matter flag indicates that there is a community for oncoming students, for students of color who are in middle school coming into high school, for new high school students that transfer to BUHS. And I I think that the BUH, I think that the Black Lives Matter flag would present opportunities to others that weren't presented to me. Yeah. So I think it's really important to raise the Black Lives Matter flag for me, because looking all the way back into middle school, when you're an eighth grader and it's your summer and you're going into your freshman year of high school, Kids are often excited, but it's also really scary because you don't know what you're expecting and high school is so big and all of a sudden you're picking all your classes and you have to think about college and all of this is dropped on you. And for students of color, there's this other concern in your back of your mind that, oh, I'm a person of color, I have a different skin color than the white kids, how is high school going to be in that aspect? And I think raising a Black Lives Matter flag would make it so much easier for incoming freshmen because they're able to visually see that I am represented here and that I have a community and that I'm gonna be welcomed. So I think that's really important to me. Um. I feel that not only will the Black Lives Matter flag be like almost like a beacon of hope for incoming and current uh, people of color, students of color, but also it could be an educational tool um, that will allow discussion to happen in, not in class, and will so to hopefully um, bring awareness to a lot of the everyday um, racially charged like. Um, encounters and about how what people of color have to go through and as not even as not only like the big stuff like name calling harassment and threats but also the small stuff like uh, microaggressions which are small sort of jabs which not only are they're not always meant in a malicious manner and that should be talked about to show that a lot of like the um, ideas that we have about certain races and uh, more marginalized groups are learned over time and that 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 you can you can learn to look past those and see people as people instead of just I, I guess to just to educate people about uh, the, uh, I guess just the basic everyday problems that they may not think about that people of color have to go through and just to see a different light to what they say on a daily basis.
Are there any board, let me just start with any board members that have any questions, either maybe for the student groups, for the administration in general, before we open it up? Yeah. Um, what's the time frame we were looking at for how long the flag is going to be? Diversity that long. Oh, how long? Where, it's going to go up on diversity day, but is it, how long will it then be up? It, it's been, the common uh, time frame I've heard is going to be, from May 4th to the end of the school year. Uh, my one thought on this is, I mean, I think, yeah, uh, we'll do this, but perhaps we should add a uh, standard and procedure for other marginalized, marginalized groups if they want their flags in the future. Um, well, and if I can just jump on to that, Ian. Um, after the middle school presentation at our last meeting, um, I was in communication with the, su the supervisory union's attorney, um, and I've been in communication with the VSBA and their legal counsel, and they said to us essentially, and I'm not saying it's a bad problem to have, but just be prepared then for a, anybody and everybody who wants to do the, to do to do something similar to this, whether it's a marginalized group, and you know, from from a legal counsel standpoint, that the, the folks I was speaking to at the VSBA said, not even just a marginalized group. It could be somebody that's very anti the school's policies and procedures and things like that could come forward with a flag that they would want to hang, and we as a collective group, as a board, would have to then also, would we have to deal with that too, so I think your idea. That's exactly what I was thinking of, and that's why we should set up standards and a system for how to how to consider these requests. That's, I think you're right, because it's, you know, I think that this feels very comfortable for all of us, for most of us, I think, based on our conversation, and I think for the community it feels very comfortable, but I think at the same time too, what's the next request that's gonna come before us? And some of it could be quite legitimate because there could be another group that has a legitimate yep. statement that's like, hey, what about me? Yeah, which is very true, yeah. Um, anybody else from the board or administration? I guess I'd just like to thank, thank you all for your passion and for your communication for, for coming. And, uh, um, Thank you. And so can we add that as a friendly amendment that we will establish? Um, is, is, are you okay with that, Sean? Um, no, actually I'm not. Um, I think that the motion says that the Black Lives Matter flag will be shum flung. Doesn't mention any time limit. So it was just a acquiescence that this is what we're gonna do. Um, and we don't have a timeline on this. Um, I mean, and I think that I, I, I think I think you're right. Your your motion does not say to do that. You know, to have a timeline or to and adding and specifically just says this flag. Um, but I think I think maybe policies and procedures should come up should put together a. But that, that wouldn't be oh, part uh, of this motion. No, so that would be part of this motion right. right now and then establish the procedure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there would be no, we're not going to add a timeline to the motion that was first presented. I mean, I don't think it should have a timeline. <laughs> and I'm not necessarily discreet, but just to play devil's advocate with you for a minute, for a minute Sean. So if in May, a GLBTQ group says, and then for Pride Month, we want to have a rainbow flag up. The Black Lives Matter flag's there. Flag pole's only so long. And I'm just envisioning before too long, we're going to have, I mean, that's not a bad problem to have, but it's just something to deal with. I'm just thinking that's the, that's the next kind of thing, is, you know, Pride Month is June. So, okay, rainbow flag's going up in June. That'll be right under the Black Lives Matter flag. And then what's the thing in July? And they, what's going to go up below that? And, and if we don't have 
a timeline where maybe it doesn't stop. I don't know, but I'm just thinking, what do we? How do we handle that? Well, it's probably impossible to predict where the uh, interest and requests, what order they're going to come from, or how many they'll be. And I don't really think it's germane to this conversation tonight. So I think we're here to, you know, it's on the it's on the agenda, mm -hmm. and we're here to discuss that. And I, I think it's a, a one item that we're talking about personally. Without a timeline, the timeline can be any. Okay. You know, should it be up for a day or a year? Or yeah, three that years. would be my question. Is that we're going to have to reconvene the question in September again, or is it, does it have to be discussed, or can it just happen, or are these people going to have to come back again and, and, and repropose to us? I mean, it, leaving it open ended isn't. That's it? why I made the motion as simple as it was, and it's sort of been open ended. Just this, this could be done. And, and, I, and I think to get to your question, Rick, I think from a procedural standpoint, based on Ian's request, I think it's a good is a good one is for us to set up a procedure on how to do this, and then that would dictate future. But that, that's a policy matter. Right. Yeah. I mean, policy. Policy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Policy. All right. Everybody. So, are we ready to vote? Do you think? Everybody feels pretty good about that? Okay. All right. All right. So, Sean, would you just read your motion one more time, just so that we're clear? Uh, or the best, the best of your. Huh? Are what? you in public comment on this? Or that was the only public comment? I mean, we could do public comment. I would like to. Okay, before we do that, I would love to have public. I mean, we can have public comment. Um, if we can keep public comment short, and if people have already said what you're going to say, I mean, I think. You know, because we could be here all night, and is that, you know, so I want us to keep it short if we can. That would be great. So is there anybody that would like to add anything to the discussion? Okay. Yes. I just have a... Can you stand up and just say who you are? Hi, Sorry. I'm Maya Torres. I'm in eighth grade for BAMS. Um, I just have a question. Are you guys voting on keeping it for the rest of the year or for further from this? Like what? What time frame are you voting on? There is no time frame on the motion that's okay. here tonight. So one of you guys said the rest of the year, and the other one. Well, there was a there was a question, and I think that to to try to answer your question, um, there's no time frame in the motion that's that will be voted on here this evening. At this point, um, somebody did ask the administration, "What is there a timeline? What is?" And I think that some people, and some of the emails that I've gotten, even said asked. People had asked to have it go up in time for Diversity Day and stay up for the remainder of the year. So I think that there's folks, maybe even in the group of people that's here tonight, that have different mindsets on what that time frame would be. But the motion tonight has no time frame. Okay, well, like the high school said, me as a freshman going into high school, it would be cool for the flag to still be here. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. So, um, I'm John Hagen, I'm the commander of the American Legion here in town. We've gotten a couple of phone calls about the idea of putting Black Lives Matter flag up, so I just wanted to reassure and put it on the record. The uh, U.S. Code, which is Title IV, Article I, Section 7, Paragraph F, says, it is entirely appropriate to have another flag flying below the American flag. That is not an issue, it is not a sign of disrespect, and therefore, um, Completely nothing wrong with doing this. So I just want to make sure that was pointed out. Thank, Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, um, <laughs> the, Were you voting on BUHS and BAMS separately? No, we're, but we're voting on the entire complex. So it would be BUHS, BAMS, and the Career Center. Okay. And also, we brought up the patches, like the middle yeah. schooler having like a gay pride flag and the trans flag maybe patched onto the Black Lives Matter? Right, hey, go ahead, Well, that, that, we have to address things that are on our agenda. And what is on our agenda tonight specifically relates to one item. So I think we have to stick with our agenda. So. And I think that you're, if I could just add on to that, I think that the idea that the middle schoolers did bring up towards the end of their presentation and you're bringing up now too is that could be something that we could address in the future to add those things to 
Okay, but as of right now, what's the motion that's on the table is just for the Black Lives Matter flag. Okay. Yeah, Mike. I'm Mike Sostek. I run our restorative justice program at the high school and do some work for BAMS also. And uh, uh, the reason I chose to speak was, and to some extent, it may address what Ian brought up. Um, I was I trying to decide in the school whether or not I should put a Black Lives Matter symbol on my door. Um, and I have 40 to 60 kids coming through my room every day because of the nature of the work I do and uh, and both uh, people of color and 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 white kids and um, and I was deciding, trying to decide what to do, what's the right thing to do here. And uh, I finally decided to put the Black Lives Matter symbol up on my door. And um, I thought you might find it of value. What happened as a result of that? Uh, basically nothing. Um, um, except it did allow uh, some good conversations, um, some good discussions of, well, don't all lives matter? And you know, the obvious question. And, uh, and it, it gives an opportunity to talk about some real, to educate, Get, to get into education, which is what our schools are all about. Um, to talk about that 63% of uh, people in prison in our country are people of color. Uh, and that's far more than the percentage of people who are in our population of color. Um, there are biases in our policing system, in our um, judicial system, and th that's real. I mean, that's real. We can prove that. And that's an important part of education. And that's why the Black Lives Matter symbol is important to single out, because there's something very special going on with people of color. And we look around this table. I mean, it doesn't look like there's any black people here. We walk through the halls of the high school. There aren't, there are very few black people in um, positions of administration, teaching, uh, uh, other staff positions, they're just not there. I don't know how many of you have ever in your life um, gone into an environment where as a white person you're the minority and around you is pr primarily people of color. I've had those experiences because of some circumstances in my life a number of times, and I can say that's a really, it's an educational, it's an uncomfortable situation. And that's what kids who are here are facing every day. Now they learn to deal with it. And I think our high school does a pretty good job of trying to help kids. But nonetheless, it's different. It's, it's something special. And I think we need to put the flag up in front of the school when I put it up on my door, I have no intention of ever taking it down. Uh, there's no time frame on that. It, it is an issue that's with us, and maybe someday it won't be an issue. I'd love to be able to take it down, because it's no longer an issue. Um, but probably in my lifetime, it's still going to be an issue. So, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> George Carvel, um, I support the flag. I think it's a great idea. Um, I'm a little concerned, or my, my own <coughs> thoughts and concerns about a policy that you're going to have to work out or want to work out at some point. I'm sure you will. Uh, I just want to say now that I do not think the policy should be anybody who wants a flag gets a flag. I think the board and the town has to show moral leadership, and I think there's some flags that shouldn't be flown. Yeah. Something really quick. Um, yeah. I, my name's Rio. Um, I'm a 10th grader at UHS. And I'd like to say that um, as a white ally, I think that it would be really helpful and it'll make the people of color at the students of color, especially at UHS, feel so included if uh, primarily, if not completely, white school board makes the decision to 
fly a Black Lives Matter flag. That's all. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? So, show. Yeah. Hi, um, Alex Fisher, part of the Root Social Justice Center and the parent of Tony, who spoke earlier. Um, so impressed with youth, uh, everyone that spoke. Thank you for sharing vulnerable things with everyone and on TV. Um, and I think I just want to add to this a piece of acknowledging that raising the flag is a symbol. It's not changing a lot of policy circumstances for youth in this town, in the school for job opportunities coming out of the high school. And so my hope is that both the school board will vote to keep the flag up indefinitely and will take that as a serious commitment to actually making Black Lives Matter here at BUHS. Um, my understanding from youth in the school is that they feel like they don't. And raising the flag, to me, is a step towards a commitment to change and to making that happen. So I'm just hoping that the flag is not the end of this conversation at this report level. Thank you. My name is Angel Velasquez. My daughter's Diamond, and when she was in sixth grade, she wasn't just targeted by a student, she was also targeted by a teacher that called her the N-word. So this is why it's very important to my daughter for this to happen. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Okay, I'll see you. All right. So, Sean, do you want to yeah, read I, your motion one more time? On, on the table is a motion that the Bradbury Union High School, um, and which includes the Career Center and BAMS, um, that the board is a group of uh, votes on allowing the Black Lives Matter flag to be flown on those three flagpoles. And that's it moved and seconded. So we board ready to vote? All right, all, right. all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? None. Okay, great. Excellent, so we move the task. So let's go ahead and just jump into the next parts of our agenda, um, which brings us to consent agenda. Is there an, a motion to enter consent agenda? So moved. Moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Okay. So let's start with finance, building, and transportation. Uh, Finance has not actually met since the last meeting because we met the same the same day. Uh, however, there are on the agenda three payroll authorizations that um, have been approved by the finance committee. However, the numbers that I received back at the meeting and the numbers that are on here are slightly different. So I would. Um, suggest that and I just realized that when I pulled this off today I would suggest that we um, hold up on those till we make sure we have the right numbers um, okay. for the last two in uh, in March so essentially your report is that we have not met in your oh, and the next on meeting the will be this Wednesday at um, 8 o'clock the central office and the main topic will be a review of our investment performance by one of the investment managers. We have three different ones. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So moving on to WSESU Finance Committee. Uh, we've not met, but we will be meeting May 1st, which I think is next Tuesday at 530 at Central Office on Green Street. And um, I, I, my suspicion is that, and I know we'll discuss it, is the getting a, a final proposals to the full SU board for the executive and or uh, executive committee or executive finance committee that was brought to the, to the full SU uh, board the last meeting when it was brought back to us to, to revise it. Some. So that's, in fact, we we're working on that. Uh, All right, any policy? Yeah. 
has not met. We do have three policies uh, on the agenda for first reading. Um, in consideration that this has already been a fairly long meeting, I was going to ask that we push that first reading to the next meeting. I think um, as much as I agree that it's been a fairly long meeting, I think that I would, I know that for the fund investment policy statement, I think that finance is waiting on that. Is that true? Oh, well that's the, that, that's the easiest one. Okay. So we can- So I would, I would maybe we don't have to, just if anybody has anything to add, they could send it to you and that could be our first, first read. Um, okay. Teacher curriculum committee. Uh, we met uh, this evening at uh, 6 o'clock, seems like a while ago, uh, and Michelle Hood um, uh, came to present um, a report on the, the science program um, here at, at BUHS and uh, trying to integrate the, the new generation uh, science, or what was the last S? Next, next generation science standards. Standards, standards. NGS. Yeah, and the PG or PBG. Uh, anyways, the uh, <laughs> the <laughs> right. and so uh, it just uh, a, 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 I, I won't review it here, but I'd be happy to respond to questions. But looking at at the uh, the progression of, of the um, uh, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh, and and uh, the sort of the, I'm going to use the word core in an inappropriate way, but the, so sort of the core, the basic classes, and um, and then the the different um, uh, electives, and then we we. Talk about it, Michelle may come back to uh, talk more about uh, how the, the standards have helped shape um, the science offerings. It was a very interesting, informative group. Thank you. Uh, BAMS committee. Uh, BAMS committee has not met. WRCC. Has not met. Okay. All right, so that seems like that's it for consent agenda. Um, is there a motion to accept consent agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed or abstentions? None. Okay. Uh, That's okay. Yep. Yeah. Could I ask for a little shift in the uh, the list here? Yeah. The agenda. Um, what I would like to do at this time, if we could, is move to uh, unfinished business B. Okay. A boy, a board, a board clerk. Clerk. Appointment of a board clerk. Yes. Okay. Because. Yeah, because we because it's something we need to do, and we're yes pretty had a pretty extensive meeting. Yeah, sure. If administration doesn't matter, we need a couple minutes. We can do just that. We can do that. We do that. All right. So under unfinished business B is appointment of a board clerk, and I think I'll just jump in by saying I believe that went around with the agenda a uh, potential template for keeping track of or to keep minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll turn it over to Sean at this point. Hopefully everyone's seen that template, but go ahead, Sean. Yeah, the reason, I, Barb, help me with this. Um, she did most of the work naturally. Um, and I looked at the Putney and the Brattleboro Town, and they have a, such a template, just to sort of simplify things. So, um, I mean, if you wanted to vote on the board clerk, I think I could have more germane things to say, right? Okay. So do you want to? Do you have, do you have a motion? Are you are you willing no. to be nominated? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll nominate Sean. Okay, so you're nominating Sean. Is there a second? Second. Second. Moved and second. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was almost the vote. <laughs> 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 Are there any other nominations for Ford Clerk? Seeing none. All right. Um, do you want to discuss that now before we vote? Or yes, I would okay. like to discuss okay, it at this Sean. point, which is the reason I brought it up. When I was a kid, my sisters always wanted to have clubs. So my older sister was the president, my younger sister was the secretary. What am I? I'm just the body. Okay, <laughs> so that's what I'm used to being, the body. The body. So um, if I am going to be elected as the board clerk, I would have to ask for help. And one of the things I was thinking that would make the job a heck of a lot easier because of names, like when you have a hire or a resignation uh, and the position, if the administrators and the central office and actually the chair could email me the particulars of the, um, you know, the, 
the actual individuals that are we're talking about. Um, otherwise, it's going to be very difficult for me to keep track. Um, so it's going to make I'm not going to be that good at this job. So it's going to make it a little easier the more help I can get from other people. So, and I won't include that in the minutes. <laughs> I saw a lot of nodding of heads, so it seemed like that was truly right. really doable for everybody. And that, that would be true also of the finance. Um, I believe Frank would be the individual that would fill the, mm -hmm. the finance with the warrants and the payrolls in, and whether we use this template or um, or not, was sort of, it's a work in progress. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Everybody good? We ready to vote? All right, all those in favor of Sean Murphy as our board clerk, signal power saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Seeing none. All right. Thank you. Sean. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> um, excellent. So let's now move to administrative reports. And why don't we start the fire under the table? <laughs> let's turn. Sure. Um, <coughs> welcome back. We had a break uh, last week, and during that break, <coughs> we sent two groups abroad. Uh, we sent a group to Costa Rica, and that group was shepherded by uh, BAM's teacher, Kurt Johnson and Susan Noble, and they uh, got in at 4 o'clock this morning. Um, they met with some travel difficulties, but they did fine. Um, they're back. I, I did talk to Suzanne briefly and to Kurt as well. Um, a great experience for all of the kids. Um, you know, Kurt said something about... Um, I'm going to paraphrase. He said, some of our kids just drink in the chance to be in another country and to use language authentically. And that was really nice to see. <clears throat> we also sent a group to Belize. Uh, Dan Braden, this is his, I think, third time taking kids to Belize. And uh, he took Nancy Johnston and Dave Mazur along with him, um, along with a group of 15 students. And they had a fantastic time as well. Um, a lot of tropical ecology. Um, they do a lot of pre-work before they leave, and Dan gives them readings, they have discussions, and then so when they, when they go to Belize, they're actually seeing the very things that they talked about and having conversations about um, things that they, they talk about, and they're looking right at it at that time. So that was a great experience um, for everybody, and we're glad they made it back. Belize also, uh, that trip, they also had trouble getting home. Um, my understanding is that Nancy Johnston uh, interceded and went to American Airlines and went right up the chain of command. And I think she took over the plane and flew it home herself. Um, but they're home, which is great to see. Um, we have set our final exam schedule, and it's a little different than it has been in years past, given the number of snow days we've had. Right now, we're looking at our seniors taking exams on the 13th and 14th of June. They will graduate on the 15th at 6.30 on sunny Natowich Field. Um, and then uh, grades 9 through 11 will take their exams on Friday the 15th and on Monday the 18th. So it's a little bit different. So we'll have senior exams first, graduate them, and then we'll finish up with um, underclassmen uh, on the uh, Friday and Monday. And then Tuesday will be a makeup day for exams as well. Can I question if there are underclassmen in classes where seniors are taking exams, will they take them at the same time? That would be at the teacher's discretion. If they want to give it separately to seniors, they can. Um, I would think that they would say, we're going to all take the exam this day, and I'm going to ask the teachers to communicate with families so they know that if it's a mixed class with seniors in it, that yes, we're going to take the exam on the 13th. Um, logistically, that seems to work better. So will the, uh, will the undergraduates be in, um, <coughs> th in school on the 13th and 14th when the seniors are taking exams? They would. Yes, and those are wish the senior. You've got room. Right, they you are. It, about it, this. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a chaotic day, a couple of days. You know, it's much easier when we don't have as many snow days. But right. you know, we've done this a few times, and so um, it's not perfect, but it seems to work for us. Um, Can I just to, interrupt real quick? Sure. So, just uh, well, one of the questions I'm getting from the community a lot is, when is actually the last day of school? The last student day is that day, the Tuesday. The last student day is Tuesday the nineteenth. Okay. For yes. us, it will be a makeup day. I can't speak for BAMS or the Career Center or right. anybody uh, else, but any of that's them. just right. Just because of the number of snow days and how many we had built in, people were asking. I know I've gotten that question. I don't know if any other board members have. Like, when is school actually out? So. And of course, if there's another closing, who knows what we'll do. But we're not going to have that. No more snow days. Right. <laughs> no more snow days. Uh, baccalaureate uh, kicks off graduation week, and that is going to be the 10th of June at 6 o'clock. 
Um, generally, it's here at BUHS, either in a courtyard, sometimes we use the BAMS multi-purpose room. That's a great experience, um, and I'll send more information when that comes along. And then senior rewards will be on Thursday the 14th at 7 o'clock, and uh, that's another great event. Um, our practice field, and I think finance may talk about this, we're going to do some renovations to our practice field beginning in, uh, at the end of June this year. What that's going to mean is that the practice field adjacent to Madowich Field is going to be unavailable for the community to use. It's going to be unavailable for us to use. Um, we're going to have to kind of rethink how we do practices and where we do practices next fall. But I, you know, I guess I want to just let everybody know that from mid-July through the end of the growing season, um, it's likely at this time that that practice field will not be available for any use. Um, that includes community groups as well. We do have some community groups that use it. Um, you know, we're going to communicate with them directly. They're going to have to make different arrangements because if we're going to redo the field, it's going to be time to grow and, and root and do all that good stuff. So uh, I just wanted that to people to know that. Um, we're going to try our long block ACE trial. Uh, we talked about that previously. We've put it off a few times for AP exams and other reasons. We're going to try that on May 21st through June 1st. And it's a two-week period with um, Memorial Day in there as well. During that time, we're going to end block two at 11.35, and we're going to start block three at 12.45. And we're going to let students have some unstructured time to either have lunch, go to ACE, uh, work independently. And we're going to try this two-week trial, collect some feedback when it's over from students and from staff, and decide, is this something we want to do permanently, or is this just an idea that we try and it doesn't work? Um, we're nervous, um, but we feel like we need to kind of respect um, some student requests, and so we're going to try it, and we'll see how it goes. Um, on May 17th, the art department is having senior awards and art show at 3.30 in the multipurpose room. If you can stop by just to see the art show itself, it's fantastic. Um, all different media, everything from, from traditional paintings to sculpture to videography. Um, if you're in the neighborhood, drop in, and then usually the art awards start about 4 o'clock. Um, it's a wonderful event, and um, the culinary program, um, Sandy Cormier and her group, they actually do some cooking, so there's snacks too, so it's a good thing to come see. Um, finally, uh, we're doing social studies interviews for our open position. That's going to be on April 27th and May 1st. I would love to have a board member join that interview committee. Right now we're slated to interview 11 candidates. So if you're interested, send me an email. I'd love to have a board member there. The time of those start soon? Uh, I, tentatively now, I would say they're going to start at 9 and go through the day. Friday and Monday? Friday, uh, Friday and Tuesday. This Friday and next Tuesday. Uh, sure. uh, I believe we mentioned at the last meeting, and maybe we didn't, it was just finance, the track being closed. Right. Um, and is it still scheduled for the day after graduation for about it eight is to ten days? For, right, right after graduation. Um, again, that's weather dependent. If they can't work on the track, they can't finish it. But right, it's right after graduation. Right after graduation. Right. Right. So just for people right. in the community that uh, like to utilize the that facility. Right. It won't be available at all for a period of time. Yeah. So, I, you know, I wish I could tell you what the weather, you know, how that would play out, but they can't do it in this. It's going to be perfect. Season. It's going to be perfect, right. Just like the graduation. Sunny and 70, that's what I'm hearing. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, let's move up one to Vance. Everyone. Um, let's see. So, just a few. Quick events here happening. Honors Assembly on Thursday. Those are fairly new uh, this year and uh, trying to build off some success there. Uh, Thursday, we have Thursday at 6, we have uh, we're calling it BAM's community, uh, community Connections, and it's basically a parent group um, that we're trying to. Um, Juni Prayer is our parent liaison, and he's trying to. Um, Going to get parents more involved and connected to the school and then the following morning friday morning um, we're doing a, a coffee hour uh, down in the, the lobby as you come into school so any of you are welcome 
from 8 to you know, about 8.45, parents are come in, we have some coffee and some donuts, and people just like to chat. And, and um, so that's been successful. Um, and we do those the last Friday of each month. Uh, beginning May 1st, we have elementary schools visiting BAMS. So uh, first, first one is on May 1st, and uh, the sixth graders come and spend an hour or two kind of touring the building and, and checking things out. So it's part of our transition plan. May 4th is Diversity Day. So that's coming up quickly, and the theme this year SEY is solidarity. And at BAMS, our social studies teachers will uh, be working with our students at creating projects and um, a meeting with them this week to finalize how that's going to work. But hope to have um, uh, students displaying projects that they've created on Solidarity in their advisory, and then advisories are going to swap and they're going to be um, kind of looking at each other's work and, and uh, answering some questions. So, so we're. Um, we're excited about that work, and I'm appreciative of the social studies teachers for um, kind of doing that much work, and of course the students. Um, uh, looks like we'll be adding a little uh, beginning of the day, some type of little uh, celebration out front of the flagpole as part of Diversity Day as well. So, um, so uh, that's that's it. Any <coughs> questions? All right. Great. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Chris. Thanks, Eric. Good evening, everyone. So, a few things to share out tonight. Our uh, NTHS award night will be June 5th at 6 p.m. And NTHS is National Technical Honor Society. And that, I'm gonna, I'll explain a little bit what that means. Is that it currently serves approximately 100,000 active members and nearly a million members since its inception in 1984. Awarding over $1.7 million in scholarships to date, NTHS honors in the achievements of top career and technical education students, provides scholarships to encourage the pursuit of higher education, and cultivates excellence in today's highly competitive skilled workforce. For over 30 years, NTHS has been acknowledged leader in recognition of outstanding student achievement in career and technical education. So this year it'll be held at the Legion Hall in downtown Brattleboro. And I'd like to invite all of you to attend uh, to that great event. And we are uh, actually creating a list of eligible students as we speak for and it. I have uh, initialized a, a substantial amount this year, which is exciting, that qualify for NTHS. So if you'd like to see who is nominated, please uh, come with, and we'll have a nice light dinner as well. Is It'll be catered. I'm sorry, is this uh, just for in the Technical Honors Society yes. this time? It's not. We're switching gears a little bit this year, Woody, okay. with the uh, previous year we have had award night. Yeah. And so we're going to have a, a day celebration that will include okay. all students and parents as well. That'll be a separate date in June. Yeah as well, and I'll, I'll provide that date uh, next board meeting. And details on that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, about a week before uh, spring break, our Skills USA students uh, participated in their state event I spoke about at the last board meeting in uh, Burlington. And they competed against their peers in the career technical education world. And I'm, I'm very pleased to say that out of the 19 students, we had two students place gold in mobile robotics. And these two students are planning on going to nationals at the end of June, which is in Louisville, Kentucky, and they're raising funds themselves and fundraising and to participate and to pay for that trip. We have three silver winners in first aid and CPR and mobile robotics as well, and 13 bronze winners as well. So congratulations to those students that participated. They represented WRCC and their their uh, sending schools very uh, professionally. So 
again, uh, about five years ago, we had five students participate in Skills USA. So see the increase is a nice, you know, participation. And Tim Lawrence was there. He is the national chair of Skills USA, and he what he spoke at the dinner and award ceremony, saying it's not about the medals, it's about the journey and experience the kids will encounter throughout their time at these extracurricular activities within their uh, CTE experience that is uh, career related as well. So congratulations to them and uh, their advisors. Our construction and architecture group of students will be taking a field trip to Bensonwood Home a uh, new facility in Keene, New Hampshire this month, or next month. And their uh, learning objective will be to follow up on Bensonwood Homes' flagship site visit. Uh, the students will be touring the facility, expanding on what they know about Bensonwood and relating to what they learned in the classroom and the shop to real world jobs and careers. Uh, Bensonwood has been a great supporter of our construction program and is part of the, our advisory system as well which uh, they'll be hiring, I'm sure, a lot of our students in the future. And John DiMatteo, our new construction teacher, has been initiating a lot of these external field trips, which is great to see and expose our students to. Our engineering construction, or engineering class, uh, led by Amy Anthony, will be visiting and touring Chroma Technology in Bells Falls this month. And their objective will be to look at the career pathways in engineering and <clears throat> to expose different manufacturing processes of, and uh, quality control of, within that uh, learning environment. And so that's off to Amy Anthony for organizing this great trip. And again, another field trip by construction. They are going to be attending Vermont Construction Career Days at VTC located in Randolph uh, next month and their objective and description of that day will include heavy equipment that the students will be able to try out and use uh, construction skills activities that they've been utilizing in class and to put them to use uh, in front of other peers that they don't know and the adults and there will be a lot of uh, other career centers attending as well so they'll be able to associate with their peers so it's a great opportunity for the kids to get out of the school in the building and travel on a bus north. And that's all I have for questions. All right, thank you. Um, Central office. Sure. So just to um, expand on Keith's Diversity Day, May 4 is Diversity Day um, for um, WSCSU wide. As Keith said, the, the theme is solidarity. Um, the Diversity Equity Committee has been working hard for weeks now. Um, the town, Peter Elwell's been representing the town on that committee. Uh, businesses will be involved downtown. Um, Elliot Street? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I can never remember Elliot if I. Elliot Street will be closed off. Um, there will be a stage set up for music that evening. So I'm encouraging everyone to come out and have fun. Have fun night. Uh, school safety is always on my radar. This Friday, um, first responders will be meeting with all of the administrators from WSCSU, um, talking about different aspects. You might know that the governor had um, mandated all schools to be uh, sort of inspected, and he's put together some interesting um, findings. Uh, nothing specific to any school, it's all statewide, but we'll be discussing those on Friday. And at that time, I'll be asking administrators to think about what uh, what was found statewide to see where we fall in uh, some of those recommendations. So we may be coming back to you with some, some of those recommendations. I wanted to let you know May 12th is Blue Cross Blue Shield Mountain Day, Mount Wontasticate. Starting at 10 o'clock, um, the first 100 people get lunch, but it's a fun day to just walk up the mountain. Um, May 12th also happens to be Girls on the Run, so it's a big day. Hopefully it'll be a sunny day. <laughs> we won't get rained out. Um, and the last thing is I want to give you the board 
self-assessment. Um, if you're new to the board, we do this yearly. Um, you can, I hope, among you this evening decide a date by which it will come back. It's all anonymous. Um, after you've done it, you send it to Barb Nowakowski. Um, she'll compile it and come back with the results. And one of the things that we can do is look at it, administrator should each um, look at it and decide if there are specific goals that we want to set as a result of this self-assessment. So. so um, <clears throat> how do people feel about timeline on completing this assessment? It's double-sided, 30 questions basically. Um, my recollection is it always goes pretty quick um, for me, but I don't know about anybody else. So pretty easy, honestly. Why we couldn't just have it next meeting? Well, we you get it sent it to Barb, so you either drop it off the central office or mail it into Barb when it's done, when you're done with it. But why don't we just say that by the next meeting, which is May seventh, that everyone will have that done and to have it to Barb before May seventh, and then I'll just check in on May seventh to make sure that everybody did that. In the past, haven't we actually collected them here and? We, 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 yeah, we've, we've collected them here sometimes at some points as well. So if people don't get, it, get a chance to get it to Barb by May 7th, you bring it to this meeting and central office, um, Lyle will get it to Barb after that meeting. So if you get a chance to get it to her ahead of time, that'd be great too. Okay. Um, I don't have a report and there's no student council, so... I have a question. Yep. Yeah. Um, actually just that point. It seems like it's been a long time since we've had student council. Why is that? They um, have had some trouble ensuring that they can get people here, especially this spring, because all of the leadership are involved in spring sports. So I can, I can you know, reiterate once again the importance of them being here with them and with the advisor as well. Does it have to be a student council? But then, could it be a student? It could be any student. Um, I mean, traditionally, it's been a student council. I mean, what I, I guess what I would like to think about is, um, you know, we have a the YAS class, and I think that would be a good place to draw student representation from. They're very motivated, very involved in the climate of the school, and uh, the work they do. You know, they, if they came once a month, they could kind of fill you in on what they're doing in their group. And that course for next year already has 22 people signed up for it, so it's already a pretty robust enrollment. So that might be a place to look. But I guess I, I want—I guess I want to respect student council and go to them one more time and say, "Hey." But you did maybe to think about for next year. Maybe it's uh, they alternate meetings when one meeting a month at student council, one meeting a month at SIATS, okay. and then we get some. We'll get different. We'll get a lot of student perspective that way over the course of the, the year. Excellent. So moving on to new business, um, and just to give us awareness of time, we have some policies to review. People have got those all, yes. Maybe instead of just going through them, we can just, if you have thoughts, ideas, questions, get them to Ian, or suggestions, get them to Ian, and we'll do a second meeting at the next meeting. Because officially all we have to do is say that we Seen them. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. first reading, all we have to do is confirm that everyone has read them readily right. and we can discuss them in detail on second reading. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I just have a procedural question on the uh, fund investment policy. Um, and it's just because my memory isn't, isn't great. We, we approved that in finance uh, last June. Um, so I'm guessing then what happened is over the summer it never got process further uh, yeah I think I think that because of some changes in the policy and planning committee it never finance approved it and it never went forward so. okay I, that's why I just want to yeah. make sure that is uh, so it hasn't gone to policy and right. then didn't come to the whole board for approval right so that's why it's here now but it's uh, already been enacted by finance anyway and moved on and uh, essentially uh, that's the direction where 
removing uh, a couple of small, uh, well, not so small, but a couple of changes in the approach a little bit to allow a little more freedom for the investment, but still give us security and safety. Uh, okay, that's that's what I thought, but I just wasn't sure. Will those need to be written into the policy? Uh, and they are. They are basically. We, under the direction of the finance committee, we were already starting to go in that in that direction. It's just a slight. It's under asset allocation guidelines. A little bit different direction than our. We we had a change. Which is why we want to make sure that we get this one moved through. So that, right. So that you are truly up acting with the authority of the board. Yeah. yeah. Well, the prior one was a little vague in those areas anyway, so we're not we're not out of line, but uh, um, so the changes are, are reflected in this document that we right, filled out. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. I believe those numbers are correct. On, yes, yeah. the allocation. On the, the first two, the 11 and uh, F34, are those the ones as passed by the WSSU? Because I know yes. there were amendments that were made yeah. uh, certainly to it. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, the, the amendments are in what we have. Yeah, and so the only, I mean, a quick look at it, it's, you crossed the WSSU and bring it But otherwise, it's, it's uh, so, okay. Yep. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Oh, just on that, when I was reading that through, and some of them were changed to be as, as District 6, but some of them said WSES. Is that just what you just said? Oh, so they are, I think. So well, they alternated so they back and forth. Sorry. So I was kind of wondering why was one change to District 6 and the rest left as WSESU. Where, where was one left? Because uh, I don't, I remember reading to them that I don't recall. Uh, I think it was the last one. The transgender. transgender. Well, there was one that, that uh, referred back to um, <clears throat> elementary education. Um, Is that the food one? Yeah, that is the blue one. Yeah, so I kind of wonder. Um, Are those the sort of comments we should just? Yeah, yeah. something like that. That's obviously yeah. just a miss when they went through and changed okay. those. Updated. So right. we will just update those before we. Yeah, all right. As part of the second reading. So the second reading. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, we'll discuss those changes in second reading. And okay. Um, so that's policy review. Under new re business, we also have the draft template for minutes, which Sean's already sort of talked about. Does anybody have anything else they want to say about the template that Sean's created? As he said, it's a work in progress, so it's not like it's set in stone, but it's just a tool for the, our, our clerk to use to <coughs> get our minutes together. Is everybody Yeah, I'll that? sort of have to, uh, I really don't know what to include and what not to include. Um, I think it could be a general flavor of the meeting. I don't think that every, I mean, Lynn Corum used to have it pretty abbreviated, and I think that's acceptable. Yeah. Yep. Okay. If it isn't, you can get somebody else. Wait, that's <laughs> it. Okay. Also, okay, so everybody's good on that um, for the template. And then under new business, Steve mentioned in his part of his report the practice field upgrades, which will be happening when school gets out. So that so that's already been discussed. Everyone's clear about that. Is there anything else for new business to come before us tonight? Seeing none, is there a motion? Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yes. There being no further business before this board, I move that we adjourn. Is there a, is there a second? Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed or abstentions? All right. We are adjourned. Thank you.